Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about a recent purchase of mine. Now people know I collect a lot of old consoles, a lot of vintage tech, a lot of vintage games. But there's been a gap in my collection for a while now. And it's this console that I picked up for $300 yesterday. It's the PS Vita. Now, some people might say, PS Vita for $300 with a box? That's a bargain. Some might also say, how overpriced is that? You got ripped off, ha <laughs> ha. But I think I paid the right amount. I think this was a good get for $300. And I'm gonna tell you why. Now people obviously know these things are essentially emulators. I know a lot of people have jailbroken theirs. And I know that people really encourage jailbreaking. But I'm not gonna jailbreak mine. And this is why. Now, PS Feeder, you might say, oh, but you can still play the game. Why would you not jailbreak it? Well, I like the search of trying to find games. I like the whole idea of keeping it in factory settings. I like to play it as it was intended by PlayStation, by whatever. But it's also the significance of this console. Now, PS Vita did a lot of things that we still see today. An SD card for games, which obviously they had their own one. This guy had a lot of mistakes so that the Nintendo Switch could fly. And you might say different companies. Well, look, the DS was around at the same time as this and they were doing cartridges anyways, I get it. But to see a high-end gaming console that essentially paved the way for what eventually Switch did, this is significant to the lineup of gaming overall. And it came with a 16 gigabyte card in it so I didn't even have to go and buy the card. Like, I don't think they knew they sold me the card by accident. I don't think they knew, but yeah, that's the console right there. It's very pristine, like I wouldn't have bought it if it was damaged or whatever, I would have probably avoided it, but this was very pristine, like it's almost in, it's like in really good shape, like a few smudges here and there, but it really feels good, like I think I got a bargain, obviously I got a little car there, I paid 300 and these were the old sticker sales because they had a couple of stickers on them, but for what I got, like I got the power cord, a linear, like booklet quick star guide. I got all the documentation in there. But why would I pick up a Vita for $300? Well, it now opens up the gate for me to, to basically hoard Vita games. But also, I love the idea of having vintage tech. I love the idea of a PlayStation Vita. I love what it represents. It represents a time in PlayStation where they were trying and innovating. And they did the portal recently. I know the portals out there. But it's not like the Vita, it's not like the PSP where you can actually have your games offline, no PS5 at home, whatever, you can still play the games. That thing needs a console to play. This, you didn't need a console to play. This could be your console. This could be your only PlayStation tech that you had in your house. And I love that idea that this was a standalone console, although you could pair it to a PlayStation 3 or 4. You could do that. But for me, this had 3G connectivity. It had a built-in SIM card you could put in it. You could... I mean, obviously the games go in there. I mean, the SD card's at the bottom here somewhere. I mean, I didn't really like the idea that they had their own, their own card they wanted you to buy. I don't know if you can see that, but they had their own sort of card. I'll try to put it in front of my hand so at least you can get a bit more focus on that. Can you see that? I don't know if you can, it may not be focusing. But do you understand what I'm saying? Like this led the way in terms of what Switch eventually became. You might say, but the DS was out there, but they didn't envision it like this, like a high-end gaming console, like PSP was out there, obviously, but one that could essentially be your console, not you'll have a handheld, you'll have a console, this could be your console. And obviously people will say, but it was around, the PS4 existed beside it, PS3 existed beside it, how dare you? <laughs> but I think it represents a lot of aspects that eventually became the Switch. The Nintendo Switch. Different companies, obviously, but Sony walked so Switch could run. Or crawled, you could say. This this didn't have a big catalogue of uh, games, people say, but it had about, what, 1,800 games overall or something like that? 1,300, somewhere in the 1,000 range it had. I know a lot of people say exact numbers, but you know, there's all different numbers for different countries. So it's not short of games. And I think that this is significant. Let me turn it on. Let's turn this thing on. I think you have to kind of hold it for a second. Let me give that um, a little bit of a wipe first. 
Obviously there's the PlayStation logo. And look at this, like, this is an experience. Turning this thing on. Look at this. It's a swipe motion. Amazing. I never owned it when I was coming up. I never owned it when I, when I had, when it was on the market, I didn't own it. So this is essentially something that I'm going to get used to. I'm going to have to buy games for it. Like obviously it didn't come with any games, but look at that interface. It's kind of a nice interface. Let's go glorious. Um, let's get some glorious pictures with this, shall we? We'll just turn around this way and we'll take a photo. Application uses location data. Great to know. Yes, yes, we know. Look at that beautiful image right there. We'll just take a quick little photo. Can we do selfies? We can do selfies. Look at that, guys. It even has a selfie camera. What's up, guys? But, yeah, it's kind of hilarious that they put a selfie camera in the, in the PSP. Or PS Vita, I should say. Sorry, people do get offended when you mix them up. But it's amazing. Oh, and when you close apps, that's right. Hold on, let's go back to the photo app. Let's continue. When you close it, you just press that and swipe motion. I didn't have this console when it was on the market. This is fascinating to me. And now I'm just going to turn it off because I want to save battery on this thing. I don't know how many cycles it's had, but I'm definitely going to try to make that battery last as long as possible. I mean, could replace it, but it's, if it's in stock, I want to try to keep it as much as stock as possible. Like I want this stock battery if I can make that last. Obviously a PlayStation card in it. I don't want to replace it with a jailbroken one or whatever. I want to try to keep this as close as possible to how it would have been coming out of the shop, you know, how it would have been. I'll just put that card back in there. But it's just amazing to have this Vita in my collection, you know. It's amazing to have it. And now it's mine. I can go and buy Vita games now. I can experience the Vita. There are games straight off to the top of my head that I want to buy, like Ratchet & Clank. Maybe Uncharted. I, I'm not a big fan of Uncharted, but I could definitely pick that up for it. I mean, also Batman. I know Batman was on here. There's a lot of games that come straight to mind when I think of this Vita. Little Big Planet. I'm definitely going to go after Little Big Planet, but some of these games can go for hundreds of dollars. And I'm not in any hurry to run out and buy X amount of Vita games to fill the void. You know, I'll come across them in time and I'll experience them in time. It's something that I see as a long-term idea, like picking up a Vita. A, it's got the box, so it kind of future-proofs for my collection. It can be like, hey, this is the PS Vita. This is how it came. It's got documentation and all that in it. So it's very nice. And it is for the people who are like, what model do you have? <laughs> it's the crystal black model. And it is PCH1102. So OLED. It's got an OLED on it, which is amazing. It's got an OLED on it. The Switch has an OLED on it. I'm just saying they took a lot of, the Switch copied a lot of what the Vita initially did. And you might say, but smartphones, they copied smartphones as well. Yeah. I mean, Nintendo, seeing the way the industry was going, saw what the Vita did and was like, we need to adopt some of this into what we do. And that is my overall, what I feel about it. I think it is a great console. I think when I truly experience it, it's going to be a great experience. And I'm happy with my purchase. Hey guys, quick little edit because I've noticed I made another mistake in my videos. So when I was editing this video together, I noticed that I closed the video by saying Nintendo Switch. Now, obviously I'm reviewing the PS Vita and why I bought it. So yeah, little error, sorry. Did you grow up on Switch? Did you have a Switch when you were younger or even have one now? Are you currently enjoying Switch? Did you jailbreak yours or not? Let me know in the comments, guys. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.